I thank my colleague from Minnesota for being such a champion on this issue and many other where it's a question of whether we have government of and by the powerful or government by and for the people of the United States of America. We've seen issue after issue after issue this year on health care, on taxes, and now on net neutrality, and I thank him for his advocacy. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that my intern, Alicia B., be granted privileges of the floor for the balance of the day. Without objection. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, last night we had an election. I've heard many of my colleagues on the Republican side say elections have consequences. But now we see that they are attempting to deliberately slow down the opportunity for the newly elected senator from Alabama to come here and serve in the U.S. Senate. They took quite a different view when the question was a special election in Massachusetts when a Republican senator was elected to take the seat once held by Ted Kennedy. And the Democrats concurred, and the President of the United States, President Obama, concurred that he should be seated, that nothing should be jammed through in, an, in a fashion that tried to bypass the weight and opinion of the people of the state of Massachusetts and who would represent them. But this chamber seems ready under this majority leadership to absolutely try to trample the people of Alabama who said where they stand last night, but this chamber wants to deny them that voice here and the floor of the Senate. Now back a few years ago in June 2013, there was a House election in Missouri and a Republican was elected to that empty seat, and Jason Kander, the Democratic Secretary of State in Missouri, said absolutely he should be seated, Missouri's 8th district, and uh, Jason Smith, the, the candidate chosen by Missouri, was, was seated in the House of Representatives, I believe, within 18 hours. Within 18 hours. So the people of Missouri could have fair representation so Democratic senators and a Democratic president and a Democratic secretary of state in a southern state said, honor the people of the United States. So I call upon the majority leader to defend the people of Alabama and seat their senator and do it under the same 18-hour standard. Now we're here to talk today about another issue of powerful versus the people. And we've seen time and time again over the course of the last few months, the President of the United States standing up for the powerful, trying to crush the people of the United States, trying to rip health care from 30 million Americans in order to give special benefits to the richest Americans. We have seen the President of the United States sign in the Oval Office a measure which would enable a powerful company, when in a dispute with a consumer, enable that powerful company to choose the judge, to pay the judge, to promise a judge future business. What kind of fairness is that for an ordinary American up against a powerful company where the powerful company gets to choose the judge? And yet my Republican colleagues voted overwhelmingly to crush the opportunity of an ordinary citizen versus a powerful company in a consumer dispute. And then we have the tax bill. The tax bill that says if, if you earn less than $30,000, you get a tax increase. And if you're in the middle class, 87 million of you will get a, an increase in your taxes. And by the way, we're going to give several trillion dollars to the very richest Americans and the most powerful corporations. Another example, a bank heist on the national treasury, our treasury, to deliver benefits to the best off, to the richest in America. Now, Oregon's about 1% of the national population. And if you take 1% of a trillion dollars, that's $10 billion. I can tell you what we can do for families in, in Oregon with $10 billion. We can invest in needed infrastructure to have a stronger economy and put a lot of people to work at living wage jobs. 
We can add teachers to our public school classrooms so that our classrooms are better opportunity for our children to learn and to thrive. We can make college more affordable. We can improve our community health clinics, make sure health care is available to all, which is so critical to quality of life. But no, my Republican colleagues say, let's give this money to the richest Americans. Let's raid the national treasury and enrich the best off among us. That's because we have a fundamental cycle of corruption in campaigns that is enabling such a bizarrely inappropriate bill to ever get heard here on the floor of the Senate. I say bizarrely inappropriate because our government wasn't founded to mimic powerful kingdoms of Europe that govern by and for the richest. We had a vision of government of by and for the people. And now, we have this issue of net neutrality. Once again, President Trump and the Republicans weighing in to crush ordinary people in favor of a powerful corporation. Now, the internet has become essential to all of us in our daily lives. We consult it to find out where to go to a restaurant or what movies are playing. We stand up and check in on the internet to find out what the sports scores are and what's the latest news. Uh, we order our airline tickets. We do so many things in our ordinary life. And yet, here is President Trump saying, we want to take that level playing field of fairness for consumers across America and let some powerful companies decide who gets to provide information, which websites to allow to have information, and which ones we're going to slow down, who we're going to put in the fast lane, and who we're going to put in the slow lane. You know, the internet is so critical to freedom of information. This is really an assault on freedom of information. It was James Madison who said, the advancement and diffusion of knowledge is only guarantee of true liberty. The advancement and diffusion of knowledge. And yet, my colleagues and President Trump want to give powerful companies the ability to control what information is shared in America. Think of a highway. You have a highway and everyone gets to use it and you can be in the slow lane if you choose because you want to save fuel or you can get in the fast lane and pass somebody who's going more slowly but you don't have someone saying hey you know what we are only going to allow the richest Americans to drive in the fast lane. We're going to allow them the most powerful corporations to be in the fast lane and for the rest of you you get to go to the slow lane. I don't care if there's a truck going 25 miles per hour, you're gonna be stuck behind it unless you pay me a whole lot of money to get out of that lane. The internet for the rich and powerful is wrong. And we have to stop it. And if the Federal Communications Commission doesn't get the message this Thursday, we need to overturn their rule here on the floor of the Senate. Now, I get a chart each day showing me the calls from yesterday. And here I have a bar saying, how many people called about net neutrality and which side of the issue did they weigh in on? 544 people called in favor of net neutrality. And according to this chart, zero people called in favor of powerful corporations instead controlling the internet. Now, I've since been informed we did get one call. So let's make it 544 to 1 instead of 544 to 0. Have you ever seen an issue that you have that kind of ratio of ordinary people weighing in and saying, don't let the powerful take over our internet? A level playing field for consumers, a level playing field for distributing knowledge, a level playing field for entrepreneurs so that the new startup can compete with the Googles and Amazons of our country in replenishing its websites. I ask you, if you had a choice between two websites last night to follow the election in Alabama, and one was in the fast lane, it could replenish its numbers instantly, and one was told you have to go so slow your numbers are going to take five minutes to get posted, which site would you have gone to? Well, of course you would have gone to the, the site that could update quickly. And that's the point. We shouldn't allow powerful companies to extort Americans 
over the information flowing through the internet. Not fair to American citizens, not fair to American entrepreneurs, not fair to the distribution of knowledge, and we must defeat it. Thank you, Mr. President.